Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, May 23rd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year, politicians and abortion rights supporters have expressed concern that cell phone data could be used to identify women suspected of seeking abortions. But exclusive WSJ reporting has found that as early as 2019 and up until a year ago, a group called Veritas Society, an arm of the anti-abortion organization Wisconsin Right to Life, was using cell phone location data to target advertising at women who had visited Planned Parenthood clinics. Neither Veritas Society nor Wisconsin Right to Life responded to requests for comment. With me to discuss what happened and how it fits into the broader picture of data collection is our reporter Byron Tao, who wrote this story with reporter Patience Hagen. Byron, how did Veritas Society get this type of precise location data? So this is the kind of data that's collected by apps. So basically, consumers opt into an app's location services, allow that app to know their location, and then that location is shared with advertisers who are able to target things like targeted ads, say you go to a certain restaurant or you frequent a certain bar. Advertisers can target you based on your geographical location if you've allowed an app or some sort of digital service to know your location. And how do we know that Veritas Society specifically was using that cell phone information for their advertising? So we managed to piece this together with a combination of human sources as well as some documents that Veritas Society had posted on their website as late as last year, which essentially described an advertising campaign that would capture the unique device identifiers whose location showed them at Planned Parenthood clinics around the country and then use that information to target them as they browsed the web or they went on Facebook or Snapchat. What did the advertising company that helped them collect this information say about that? So they basically used a company called Near Intelligence to what's called geofence these Planned Parenthood clinics. That means essentially just drawing a a square or a circle around Planned Parenthood locations and seeing what devices appeared in that specific location. This company has policies against doing that. However, it's very difficult to police what happens on their platform. And they did eventually suspend this campaign, but it went on for a, a while before it was caught. What did the advertisements that Veritas Society ran look like? A lot of them were aimed at women who had taken one of a series of pills to induce a medicated abortion. And that involved telling them that it might be possible to save their pregnancy by taking a different drug. We should say this is an unproven scientific procedure that many doctors say is not supported by scientific evidence. But essentially, this is what this ad was targeted at, women who were considering or had taken the first in a series of pills that might induce medical abortion. And you said those ads appeared on social media. I mean, what kind of platforms and what did those platforms say about having these ads and this kind of targeting there? We know they were trying to reach consumers on Snapchat, Instagram and Facebook at least. And the way they set up the campaign also allowed them to later target those people as they were moved around other websites. The three main social media services all said that various aspects of this campaign violated their internal rules and said that they had pulled down the ads. Did the Veritas Society or Wisconsin Right to Life comment on this story? Neither of those groups responded to our request for comment. And what about Planned Parenthood? Planned Parenthood called the ads Veritas Society was running, quote, disinformation, and they said that Planned Parenthood is committed to providing sexual and reproductive health care and information in a setting which preserve and protect the essential privacy and rights of everyone. Is it legal for something like this to go on? There's no explicit federal law that bans the targeting of abortion clinics for digital advertising. That said, the FTC in recent months has advanced a legal theory that basically the selling of information on consumers just like this might be a violation of some consumer protection laws, though we should say that their initial lawsuit on the matter involved none of these parties and was rejected by a judge. 
Separately, a bunch of states have actually passed comprehensive privacy laws, and many of those state laws do deal with things like health information or precise geolocation. But as of right now, there's no overarching federal U.S. privacy law that would prevent something like this from happening. How do groups like Veritas Society and advertising companies that use geofencing feel about the fact that some regulators are trying to crack down on this practice a bit more? The digital advertising industry is a multi-billion dollar business, and a lot of money is wrapped up in knowing details about consumers. And a lot of content on the web is paid for this way. And so, in general, rejiggering the way we pay for content, the way we get apps, is a huge undertaking where there are a lot of players with a lot of vested interests in keeping the status quo. In general, Congress has struggled with how to balance these competing priorities. And as of right now, there's no federal comprehensive privacy law. And so if somebody wanted to protect their data, is there a way they could do it then? The most basic thing you can do to protect your location data is to basically not let apps know your location unless they need to. Many modern smartphone operating systems allow you to just share location when you need it, so when you're calling a rideshare or when you're checking the weather rather than a 24-7 access to location. And many of these apps work just fine if you turn the location off and tell the app where you are manually. All right, that was WSJ reporter Byron Tao. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.